instead of me boring you to death with a chat GPT script telling you what a client engineer does, like a lot of people do on here, why don't I just tell you what I do actually do? How about I don't bore you to death with buzzwords like I deliver cloud platforms, I secure cloud platform, I'm in charge of commute, I'm in charge of networking. Because none of that is actually very helpful for someone trying to get into a cloud related role. Whether that is for someone who already works in technology and is interested in transitioning into a cloud computing role, or perhaps you're someone who's studying, someone who's in university, someone who's going for a boot camp, or someone who's self taught, and you have absolutely no idea what a cloud engineer actually does day to day. If you don't know who I am, I'm Tech Toby. I've been working in technology for 10 years, and more so recently as a cloud engineer. I'm experienced in on prem, hybrid, and cloud solutions. I've worked in support for the past five to six years, I've been in engineering. Now the truthful answer is, is that no day as a cloud engineer is the same. Typically as a cloud engineer, you will have multiple different hats and you'll be juggling different projects at one point. The key thing to note massively is that the role of a cloud engineer differs between companies because not every company is going to have a cloud engineer doing the same thing. Now, for example, you could be a cloud engineer that worked in a product team and your job is to ensure the cloud platform and all of the architecture hosting that product application that the software engineers have made is working. Perhaps you'll be working alongside a DevOps engineer also, whose job is primarily is to automate the delivery of that software from the architecture that you've designed and deployed. The other option is you could be a cloud engineer who focuses on delivering landing zones, scaling landing zones out. Now in your head, you're probably thinking, what on earth is a landing zone? A landing zone is essentially a well-architected framework by AWS or Azure that enables companies to seamlessly migrate to be able to use a cloud as a domain. For example, if you're sat in the office and you work for a bank, you may be using a laptop or a computer that could be hosting applications that are on AWS or Azure. Behind the scenes that you have no idea what's going on, all of that network could be connected up to the cloud or everything could just be on the cloud. Even your laptop or computer could be somehow connected into the cloud to be used as part of a modern workplace platform. Now, typically cloud engineers that work on designing landing zones and delivering landing zones for clients typically are more down the consultancy led route. They could be working for a large digital transformation consultancies or even working for big four. And that's also a very key thing to note is that not every cloud engineer works for a technology company. You could work for a bank as a cloud engineer. You could work in insurance. You could work in defense. You could work in consulting or even big tech like Microsoft or AWS. Now, what do I actually do as a cloud engineer daily? I don't like answering this question because as I said previously, there's no such thing as a daily. So I start work usually around 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. In the morning, I'm going through emails, checking up on what I did yesterday, planning out my day for today. And by the time 10 a.m. hits, we have a team stand up. Now a stand up is just a 15 minute meeting where everyone in your team gets together, talks about what they did yesterday, what they're going to be working on today, whether they have anything that's blocking them. Because that way, if you're a member in your team that knows the answer to your question, they can help you out. Now the project I'm actually working on at the moment is migrating a three tier web application on an old AWS platform into a landing zone. So the first step was just migrating the account, which is very easy to do. Because the free tier web application we're using is a well-known popular product, it was actually originally deployed with an AWS partner solution. If you don't know what an AWS partner solution is, it's a way for large sort of software as a service companies or companies that have applications that are regularly used, for example, like Jira. They create a cloud formation template of AWS and you literally just press go and it will go deploy all of your cloud architecture with cloud formation and your application will be pretty much up and running within about 10 minutes. Then all that's left for you to do is go and configure that application to your requirements, which normally would be done by an application engineer. Now, because that partner solution was nowhere near as secure as it needed to be for the industry I work in, it was missing a lot of encryption on the virtual machines, the EC2s, and encryption on that database. And we also now are using our own certificate authority. So a lot of that had to be changed and migrated over. Now, my role within this project was to deliver all of that architecture primarily using Terraform, which is infrastructure as code. The solutions architect presented me the design. When the solutions architect normally presents the cloud engineer design, they will review it, go through it and make any suggestions say, have you thought about doing it this way? Maybe this isn't the best option. And that's how I collaboratively work with my solutions architect. Once the solutions architect has confirmed the design after we both worked on it together, it's then my job to go and deploy that. So I've created custom Terraform modules for the network with the VPC, subnets, and that gateway. And I've also had to create further modules for the database, 
the EC2s, an auto scaling group, and many other more modules. I've also had to configure the Terraform remote state to be stored in an S3 bucket, and eventually further on down the line, putting that all of those Terraform modules into a CI CD pipeline. Now that's a very high level description of that project, and what it really doesn't go to show you is the amount of troubleshooting along the way we've had to do to get this to work. There are specific requirements for the industry I work in, and I have to work to cybersecurity frameworks like NIST, for example. And because of the way a landing zone works, you'll typically have a network management AWS account, like similar on Azure. Now the way a landing zone works is typically you're gonna have a network management account where all of your user traffic will pass through through a firewall. And you may have load balancers configured in there to divert traffic to applications. Now, as this is an internal landing zone for internal staff members, it's the first time we've ever really had to work on something like this. So what we're trying to do is route traffic through a network management account to another AWS account where our auto scaling group instances are stored. Now, there's obviously various ways to do this with AWS. You could do VPC peering. You could use a transit gateway. There's obviously different types of load balancers that you can use. You can use an application load balancer. You can use a network load balancer. So it's all about finding the best solution to actually get that product to work over the end of the line. Now, obviously a project has a lot of meetings, so meetings can take up your time. When you're in a meeting, you're not doing your engineering. Creating all your custom Terraform modules takes quite a bit of time. You have to deploy them, redeploy them, edit code, change code in order to get everything up to a standard where it actually works. Now a project like this could even last two weeks, four weeks. Sometimes you could be working on a project that lasts months. So in answer to what a cloud engineer actually does, the answer typically is usually going to be the same. Design, deliver, secure, monitor. As always, thank you all very much for watching. If you like the video, please hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe. And also, if you want to see my cloud engineering roadmap video for 2024, don't forget to check that out on my profile too. It covers all the tool sets, the frameworks, any certifications that you may be interested in. And it's a very good way to get started on how to learn cloud engineering. Thank you once again.